The question is being asked all over the country, what to do about health professionals who carry the AIDS virus? CBS News health correspondent Edie Magnus reports tonight's Eye on America, two towns facing the fear. Robert, I'm Dr. Zepkowski. Dr. Neil Zebkowski works one morning a week in an AIDS clinic in Buffalo, New York. He used to have a full-time job in the emergency room in nearby Dunkirk, the only doctor on his shift. But after the Centers for Disease Control advised in July that infected health care workers should not perform invasive procedures on patients, hospital administrator Richard Ketchum asked Dr. Zebkowski to step down. The facts of the matter are that the public is... Uh, very much afraid, almost to the point of being hysterical. They are projecting their own hysteria on the population. I know that I have infected no one by any medical procedure that I've ever done. The new guidelines were intended to clarify what to do when the healer is sick, but many communities still struggling to interpret them have ended up taking no chances. The administrator says the hospital would have closed if they kept you on. He doesn't know that because he never tried it. I think he should try it and find out. You can't change public opinion of the United States in Dunkirk, New York overnight. But you yourself know that much of that reaction is completely irrational. Sure it is. Absolutely. And yet you essentially caved into it. Well, I don't think it's caving in at all. It's being aware of the reality. I would still have him. If something was wrong with me, I would still go. Dawn Cash was one of 4,000 patients notified of her exposure to Dr. Zebkowski. She tested negative for the AIDS virus. By sending him away, that's saying, you know, he did something wrong. You're such a good boy. Dr. Zebkowski delivered three of Holly Cheever's children. Before the third was born, he told her privately he had the AIDS virus. You weren't scared? I really wasn't. I just simply was not willing to give up this excellent, you know, friend and family physician uh, for something that was not a threat to me. All of those tested were negative. In this small town, Dr. Zipkowski's absence is a loss. By contrast, the disclosure by a young resident here in Hershey, Pennsylvania, that he had tested positive for the AIDS virus has produced hostility and fear. The doctor's identity has not been disclosed. Immediately after tests were offered to 400 women he had treated in the fertility clinic, some patients went to court seeking to force the hospital to test every health care worker employed there. And I would like to see something mandatory as far as procedures and testing. Here we go. Former patient Kelly Wolgamuth filed the suit. She too tested negative for the AIDS virus. There's a lot of people that are in my position, they just don't know it yet because no one is required to tell them that they are. That's terrible because if you do get this, you die, period. Let me assure the American public that their chances of getting AIDS from a healthcare worker are essentially nil. That's what they say, but I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Was a girl in Florida? I, I mean, I don't know. Is that going to be me in a couple of years? To date, beside the cases traced to the Florida dentist, no one is known to have tested positive for the AIDS virus after being exposed to an infected health care worker. But despite the reassurances, despite new guidelines, critics say the lack of a clear federal policy has left local communities to make their own policies arbitrarily, town by town. And those who come forward are left fighting two battles, one against a fatal disease, the other against the fear it incites. Edie Magnus, CBS News, Dunkirk, New York. Neck and neck in the NL West. The Dodgers battle last year's cellar dwellers, but this year's pennant contenders, the Braves, Saturday. One rock and roll band, perhaps more than any other, expressed the energy and freedom of the 1960s. Today, the group still expresses the same energy and freedom. They're grateful because they're timeless. They're timeless because they're dead. Richard Threlkeld reports. 
They've only made one hit record. They don't make many music videos, and they're sneaking up on middle age. But 26 years after they started, the Grateful Dead are still on tour and almost always sold out. No different now than back in the 60s. Every concert is still a happening. People get fanatic about the Grateful Dead. All sorts of people. Well, she Mom came to have here. fun today, and she's going to have fun tonight. She may dance. She might be, my mom might I'd dance like at a Grateful Dead yeah, concert. Yeah, I like that. True followers of the Grateful Dead are known as deadheads. The last year I saw close to 40 shows. By day, Dan Hubert's a lawyer in New York who started his own law practice so he could remain a deadhead by night. Two hours ago, I was in the criminal court building, finishing up the last of my cases for the day. And then what happened? Will this job I got? What's so great about the Grateful Dead? But everybody's concentrating on the music, and there's, there's a sense that this is happening at this moment and will never happen again. I think the appeal is that, that it's real, and that we, too, make mistakes up there right in front of everybody. God and everybody, we go out there and we drop them, you know? We, I call them train wrecks. We, we have some real good derailments. And even after 26 years, the Grateful Dead figure they're not half finished. I'd love to be doing this in another 10 or 20 years or another 30 years. I'd love to do this until the end of my days, and I hope that lasts for a long time. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News, New York. Yes, we're going back to that shack way across the railroad track. Well, here among the grateful living, it's time to say that Bob Schieffer will have the news for you tomorrow. Connie Chung on Sunday. Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News. I'll see you Monday. Good night. This is CBS.